Hello everyone and welcome back to the Syntax Byte. In this video, we're gonna be covering 20 essential VBA functions and subs that I believe every VBA programmer should know, along with some code examples showing you how you can put each of these functions to good use. So let's get started. Our first function is message box. And unless you're brand new to VBA, you're probably already familiar with message box. Let's go ahead and take a look at a simple hello world example with message box. It's really simple. Just call message box and pass the string that you want to display. What you might not know about message box is that you can also use it to build slightly more advanced user interfaces by adding additional buttons. Message box returns an integer, which allows you to know which button was selected. Our second function is input box. Input box is one of the most basic ways to get user input from the user in text format. Let's have a look at a simple example that asks the user for their name and says hello to them. First, we set the name variable to the result from input box. Then we use the message box function to say hello to the user. The input box function is really simple. One thing we didn't handle in this example that you may want to handle is what to do when the user hits the cancel button. In that case, input box returns an empty string. In our macro, nothing bad will happen, but we'll simply say hello to nobody. Our next function is the join function. The join function takes an array of strings and joins them on a separator. This is cleaner than using the ampersand to append strings one at a time if you have several that you want to join. In our case, we will adjust our example above to use the join function. Simply use the join function and pass an array with the word hello and the name. As the second parameter, we will pass the separator, which in our case is a comma and a space. Our next function is the left function, and we will combine it with several other string manipulation functions to make our hello name example a bit more interesting by correcting the casing of the name that the user typed in. The left function simply takes a certain number of characters from the left side of the string. We can combine the left function with our next function, ucase, which makes a string entirely uppercase. We combine ucase of name with left and pass 1 to get the leftmost character. This gives us the first character of the name capitalized. Next, we have the right function. This is very similar to the left function, but as the name implies, this takes the specified number of characters from the right side of the string. We pass it to the L case of name, which is name, but all lowercase. Very similar to the U case function, but this time for lowercase. The tricky part here is that we also combine it with a final function, len, which will give us the length of the string. While we know that we always want the first letter to be capitalized, we know we simply want the rest of the string to be lowercase. The user could type a name of any length. So we pass len of name minus one to account for the first letter and then take the rest of the string lowercase. Putting it all together, we could test it and see that it correctly capitalizes the name. Our next function is isNumeric. We can use isNumeric to check if the user has entered a number in the input box, among other cases. Let's create a macro that offers a simple user interface to bulk add sheets. First, we start by getting the number of sheets the user wants to add using input box. Then, we use the isNumeric to check that we have actually entered a number, and that it is non-zero. This leads to our next function, which is sheets.add, which allows us to add new sheets. A common thing you might want to do in a macro for a large variety of reasons. In our example, we simply call sheets.add with the count parameter to add several sheets at once. Our next function is the range.copy function, shown here with the application.selection range as part of a new code sample. This function will copy the range that we specify, in this case the user's currently selected cells. We will then paste into new cells that are created beside. With those cells copied, we will use our next function, which is range.insert, to insert new cells. We specify that we want the existing cells to be shifted to the right. After having copied some data and made a space for it, we want to paste it in those new cells. Since those new cells should be already selected, we simply use activesheet.paste. Finally, we get rid of the outline on the cells by setting application.cutcopyMode to false.
Our next function is application.getOpenFileName, which allows the user to choose a file from a file browser. The function will return the path of the file that the user has selected, unless the user cancels, in which case it will return false. For our example, we're going to combine it with a few other options to quickly open a workbook, add a sheet, leave a message that macro was here, and close it. We go through some basic verification to ensure the user selected a file and that the file exists. Then, we use our next function, workbooks.open, to open that workbook. This will cause Excel to open the workbook in a new window. We use a function seen earlier, sheets.add, to add a new sheet to the workbook. With that sheet now active, we put the text macro was here in cell A1. And finally, use two new functions, activeworkbook.save and activeworkbook.close, which of course you could use with any workbook, not just the active one, to save and close the workbook. Let's see this macro in action. I'll create a new workbook and then run the macro and select the workbook. We notice it very quickly opens, then closes. Now, let's check out what changed in the workbook by opening it up. We can see that there is now a second sheet in the workbook with the text macro was here in the first cell. Awesome. We only have a couple more functions to look at today. Next up is application.calculate. This can be used to force a sheet recalculation during a macro, which is useful to recalculate formulas that may give a different result every time, or ensure a calculation occurs even if the user has manual settings set. Check it out in this example with the RAND function. Next up, what we have is really a group of functions, but a very useful one at that. I have a feeling you might already know some of these functions. That is the application.worksheet function functions. What this allows you to do is use the worksheet functions you are familiar with inside of VBA. Let's have a look at a quick example using the unique function. I have here a list which contains a type of vehicle, car, truck, or van. I want to get all the unique values only. I can simply use the application.worksheet function dot unique the same way I would use the unique function on the sheet. Then I paste the values into the column next to it. Simple. To end off this video, I have one last function application.quit. Just like that, we quit Excel and we're finished with our macros for the day. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned some new functions and how they could be useful in your macro programming. If you found this helpful, please like the video and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more Excel content like this.